Okay, so now that we've drafted our trousers, um, I'm going to show you a couple different styles you can um, do with them. And again, it's not just with trousers, you can do them, you can do it with the slacks or the jeans, all the principles are the same. Um, but, um, and they're pretty simple to do, okay? So we're going to stylize um, a pair of trousers here to be boot cut or bell bottom, basically the same thing, all right? So go ahead and trace off your front and back trouser slopers. All right, once it's traced off, we're going to start with our front here. So here's my center front. And like I said, we're going to do a boot cut or um, bell bottom. So if you think about it, where is the flare coming from? You have all the flare at the hem, and then it tapers up um, to a point of origin somewhere in the pant leg. Okay. So the first thing we'll do is we're going to extend our hemline in both directions. And you need to decide how much flare you want to add. Okay, if you're going to do lots of flare, all right, or a little flare. The thing you want to be consistent about is you want to do it the same on both sides, all right. And remember, whatever you do on the front of the pant leg, on the inseam, and on the side seam, you have to do at the back pant leg on the side seam and inseam, all right. So in this case, let's flare out four inches in both directions, all right. So I'm going to measure out, here's my side seam right here. I'm going to measure out four inches from side seam. Okay, so I'm at the hem. I've flared out. This is the front pant leg in both directions. Or I've trued out my hem in both directions. And I'm measuring out, here's my side seam. I'm going to measure out four inches from side seam and mark. And then here's my inseam. I'm going to measure out four inches there and mark. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is decide where I want that flare to come from. Do I want it to come from my knee? Do I want it to come lower? Do I want it to come higher? Okay. For now, for the sake of it, let's do it from our knee. Okay. So I'm going to connect this mark where I flared out four inches and connect that right to the knee. And same thing on side seam. Connect right to the knee line. Like so. Okay? Next thing I need to do is notice, alright, my original line, this red line. I'm going to measure that line from my knee down to him. And let's take that measurement. Okay, so that is 14 and 5 eighths. So now on this new line I drew, I'm going to measure from that knee line 14 and 5 eighths, and I'm going to mark it. Okay, and same thing here 14 and 5 eighths, and mark it. Now here are my marks. I have one right there, and one right there. Okay. You can see from here to here is 14 and 5 eighths, but because this is traveling a longer distance, there's some space in between, okay? This, we're going to blend that right into the hem, okay? The reason we don't want to go all the way down to original where it connected is because this is longer. So that means on the side of our, if we we're to create these bell bottoms, on the side of it, our side, our inseam and our side seam would hang lower than the rest of the the bottom of the hem, okay? So I'm just going to use my curve ruler and I'll just blend that right into the hem. So. And here we go. Okay. Alright, so let's do the back. Okay? 
This is my inseam side seam. First thing I'm going to do is true my hem out, my hem line, and as I do that, I'll just draw the line longer than I need it. Now here at side seam, I'm going to flare out or measure out four inches mark, and then the same thing here on the inseam, measure out four inches and mark it. Okay. Because I connected at knee on my front, I'm going to do the same thing on the back because they are sewing together and we want to sew like seam to like seam. Like so. Now the measurement here should be the same. It should be 14 and 5 eighths, which it is. So let's measure that out on this new flared edge. Let's see, 14 and 5 eighths right there. And same thing here. Since this is the back, okay, there's one more thing to think about. Sometimes they do the, and they do this usually on dresses and skirts is instead of the hem being the same length all the way around the body same as front side seams back okay what they typically do at back is lower the seam a little bit okay you do not need to do that but we could think about doing it about let's just say an inch that may be too much maybe not enough but you'll know when you do your muslin okay and then if I, so I'm just bringing my trouser line, or sorry, my crease line down, and then I measured down and drew a line parallel, one inch to my original hem line, and then I'm going to square out a half inch on each side of that, like so. So this can give it a little bit of a nicer look, and now I'll just blend from the mark on my inseam and side seam down to those half inch points. Okay. And there it is. We've now successfully added flare to our pant leg. Okay. A couple things to remember. And one thing to remember is this flare could have come from anywhere. It could have came from crotch all the way down. It could have come between knee and crotch all the way down. Okay you can decide. It could have come from right here to out there. All right. You get to decide where the point of origin is, where that flare starts, and you get to decide how far that flare goes out. All right. Just make it consistent. What you do on the side seam, what you do on the inseam and side seam of the front pant leg, do the same thing on the back pant leg. And then that's how you add flare to your, to your pant legs.